Hi, this is Damon Tordini with Oakridge Systems, and I'm here to show you the cooling line analysis functionality in SolidWorks Plastics. Here I've been working on the design for a uh, plastic beer tap handle that's going to hopefully be the uh, face of our Hawkridge Systems uh, craft brew that we're working on. And some of the uh, traditional plastic part design challenges have arisen as I've been going through the design of this part. Um, related to the injection molding process, which is how we are planning on manufacturing this. Uh, things like, uh, could a short shot issue occur when we try to fill the cavity of this mold? What material would work best uh, to fill the part or what gate location would be ideal? And we can predict the injection molding process with an add-in called SolidWorks Plastics, which will help us answer some of those questions and do things like make quick design changes to figure out how we can improve the process. But a related issue that we might need to ask ourselves is what that mold tooling should actually look like to get a good part manufactured. And one of the common challenges when it comes to mold design is the setup of the cooling solution. Here I've got my SolidWorks part file where I've used my solid modeling features and some of the fastening features in SolidWorks to make the part. And to, for starters, I've run a basic fill analysis using this ABS nylon blend material. And that's going to give me some basic information about the manufacturing process, including the fact that it will fill successfully in a reasonable amount of time, according to the results advisor here. And this is a great first step when you're trying to design a plastic part. And this kind of fill analysis in SolidWorks Plastics will also give you an estimate of the cooling time, which typically makes up a majority of the total cycle time. However, one of the key factors here that you have to keep in mind is that all of the results in a fill analysis like this, including the cooling time estimate, assume that you're going to be able to hold the temperature of your mold at the recommended temperature. And in fact, it assumes that you're going to have a uniform mold temperature. And as we all probably know, in reality, that's much easier said than done. So using SolidWorks Plastics, we can perform a cool analysis to figure out if that's actually possible. And the first step here will be to modify the properties of my study to enable the cool simulation. So I'm going to edit my simulation type, turn on cool simulation, and that's going to give me the ability to define some other aspects of the mold setup here. Now, if I don't know exactly what I want the mold tool or the cooling solution to look like, and I don't want to spend the time to model that in detail with SOLIDWORKS features, that's okay. I can start by doing a basic cooling simulation using some simple sketch geometry. So here I've done a couple basic uh, 2D sketches for my water lines in both the cavity and core side of the mold. And what I can do here is go to the domains in my plastic study setup and define the cooling channel by clicking on those sketches. So I just go to the flyout feature manager here and select those two sketches. And Plastics is going to allow me to specify the diameter of the cooling line, in this case 10 millimeters, and some simple mesh options. Now to correspond with that, I can also define what's called a virtual mold. So rather than having to model up a core and cavity with SOLIDWORKS features, I can specify some basic XYZ dimensions for the mold. And of course, that'll contribute to the heat uh, conduction and other heat transfer analysis that needs to occur here. Now I also need to specify the materials for those, what the mold is gonna be made out of and what coolant I'm planning to flow through here. We'll just right click on those things to select the material here. And there's a library of coolants that we can choose from, either water or maybe an ethylene glycol mixture here. And there's a similar library of metals for the mold material. For, for now, we'll go with a 420 stainless steel. Lastly, I need to specify the coolant inputs and the flow rate that's going to be moving through the mold. So I can do that here with the coolant input boundary condition. And that just has me select which side of the cooling line is the inlet, which side is the outlet, the flow rate, in this case 200 cc's per second, and the incoming temperature. I can do that for both sides of the cooling line as well. In this case, I've got two. Once I've defined all those conditions, I can run my cool analysis, and that's going to compute the temperatures of the mold tool based on this coolant flow, which will then serve as a precursor for all of the other analysis results. If I switch over here to my finished study, we can pop up some cool results with an idea of what's going to be available to me. 
Of course, I'm going to have an estimate of um, temperatures and all the other things that I'm used to. But the important factor here is that all of these temperatures and the estimate of the park cooling time will now be based on the reality that my mold is not at a uniform temperature and that I've got some hot spots here which I'm trying to prevent with the flow of this coolant. I can look at the estimate of the park cooling time, I can look at the cycle averaged mold temperature and realize that it is not in fact uniform, and I can even see results like the velocity vector of the flow in the coolant system um, which is based on a true you know, CFD or fluid dynamics analysis here. So uh, the vectors and, and directionality of the flow is all taken into account, which means we can also simulate more complex cooling line geometry for things like 3D printed conformal cooling and lots of other interesting features. Bottom line, doing a cool analysis like this will improve the realism of all the other results of my solid plastics analysis. If you want a deeper look at the design and analysis functionality in SOLIDWORKS, SOLIDWORKS Plastics, and other tools that can contribute to a part design and manufacturing process like this, check out the webinar in the link below entitled Manufacturing a Beer Tap with SOLIDWORKS Plastics, available on our Hawkridge Systems blog. Thanks for watching and stay tuned for more analysis solutions on our YouTube channel from Hawkridge Systems.